Alright guys, welcome back to Whitetail Bushcraft. We're kind of keeping the primitive weapon hunting tool theory going for you guys. So today we're going to do one of the forgotten uh, primitive hunting tools, it's the bola. So stick with me and we'll show you how we make this. We're going to do a primitive version of it. Alright guys, some of the things we're going to use for this is some stones. Stones you want to look for something solid, not something real light and densey. And I like to get them kind of shaped like a thumb almost. Uh, something nice and solid. We're going to need three of them. I'm going to pick three of the best ones that we've been looking for. Kind of like river stones. And nice piece of quartz here. It's a good heavy one. You want to try to find them weighing about the same also. Maybe one a little bit heavier. You're going to need some, uh, we got some tanned leather here. Which is, you could also use a bandana in a uh, DIY situation where you want to make one. And we got some rawhide uh, cordage. So stick with me and we'll cut some of these out. I'm going to use my uh, long hunter tin to use as a pattern and I'll show you what we're doing with these. Alright guys, I'm using my tin for a pattern and I'm cutting three of these out. Then I'll show you what I do from there. Alright guys, what I'm going to do now is more or less make, make a little uh, pouch out of this. And what I did is I drew another line in here about an inch away from the diameter, a smaller one. And I'm just using a little punch to get this through. And I'll poke it better through with my knife. do is we'll make this like a pouch. I'm using two pieces of uh, cordage and three of these circle pouches. And this is something you could make, you know, on the fly. You could take your bandana or a piece of your shirt, use some rocks and two boot straps, you know, would do it. So let me get these holes reamed out a little better and I'll show you how I pouch this up. Give yourself some slack too, that way you'll be able to uh, have plenty to tie it up then with. Had to break out the old glasses guys, up close, my eyes are getting old. guys wouldn't mind seeing another primitive hunting tool and I'm going to be doing a video on the uh, Blue Hill UL stove that Sean sent me do some little bit of trail cooking so hang in with, there with me while I get this together and I'll show you what I mean about a little pouch this is what I mean about a little pouch guys see how this is going to hold itself and the trick is you want your longest tether here, not the part you're going to be tying with, to be inside, not starting from the outside. You want to start on the inside so when it comes in here, when it comes out, it's going to be coming from the center. Get your rock in there, make sure it's the right size. 
and I also want to bring this tie end through that one. So what this more or less is going to do, any strain put on this will actually tighten up tighter on the rock, so less chance of that rock coming out of there. That rock might be a little big for what I want. I'm going to go with that one so I get a little bit more to tie on. See what I mean, guys? How we're got its own pouch. Okay, let this thing tighten up. This will be coming, you know, your longest part of your string will be coming out of the center of the pouch. I mean, more or less, cinch this up, and you got your one part of your tool, hunting tool. I'm going to tie this up, guys, and we'll get two more going, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, guys, I got three of them going here. Oops. Got three of them going. That's kind of our finished product. And you can see, as I pull on that, it tightens itself up in there. I mean, there's no way that rock, it's actually pulling the sack tighter by pulling like this. Tied it up. We're just using three items, the leather, the cordage, and some stones. Very easily made on the fly, guys. And one of them is one lace. See what I mean? That's going to be two short ones, and we're going to do one long one. That way it's one continuous string there, less chance of it breaking. All right, I'm going to get these together, tie up this other one. This one I got cinching up, too. And we'll go throw this thing, see how, how it works. What I'm doing now, guys, is tying them together. I might give myself a little handle here. It doesn't really what kind of matter what kind of knot you do, just so they won't slide. Two are the same length, and then one's a little longer. And I'll show you guys, guys that here in a minute. There's kind of our finished product there, guys. Let me uh, tie this up one more time. I know it ain't going to come apart. We'll trim it up. Nice thing about this leather cordage, it's hard to unknot. Might even keep a loop on this one end so I can hang it off my belt or something. This uh, weapon is more of our southern Native Americans and uh, Spaniard South America influence and origin. I'm going to trim it up. And we're going to try to throw it, guys, see how it works. And this is made mainly to uh, tangle up your prey. So then you, you know, pounce on it and take it out with your knife or whatever. And it could kill also small prey. So stick with me and we'll start throwing this thing, guys. Here's what our three pouches ended up looking like. Not a bad little uh, hunting tool. Let's go see how it, work, it works, guys. We're going to get out into an open area, guys, where we can throw this thing, pound a few stakes in the ground, and uh, see how she flies. As you can see, I got two about as long as my arm, and one about, I'd say, 10 inches longer. You know, and there's two forms of throwing this. You could be doing the spinning, where you're going to be spotted more by an animal as you're walking around, more chance of tangling up in the brush. But you can also do a one force throw, where you're just going to keep it down, keep it trapped, and throw. But we'll do a little bit of throwing. Let's see how we do, guys. So hang in there. Hit it at least. Didn't spin around it, but we'll try some more. If you want to kind of untangle it, you could be walking. You could be walking through the woods and you see a rabbit. And you do your move and boom. Let's try some more here, guys. Oh, I 
missed that one completely. That's all right. It's all about practice. I've seen it spin around a little more, but we'll try some more. We tried about 15 yards back. There! You heard how that hit. That definitely would stop an animal for a little while. Add a little bit more. I'm going to try the actually spinning one. And you can see how it spins up. That was the legs of a deer or something. You definitely tangle it up. back in the ground a little more. Ready for some more? Oh, right between the two of them. <laughs> practice though guys this can be a very effective weapon or hunting tool a little bit more throwing I think we can get her tuned in Ooh, actually broke the plastic on that one That's what we want it. See how she wraps around guys down low, tangling the animal up and come in for a quick kill after that if it didn't mobilize it completely. I'll show you my technique when I'm talking about that one swing throw. You're going to come up. You walk in, you see your animal, you stop instead of swinging it over and over. Keep it trapped. There we go. Go ahead and show them on this one. Right there, guys. Alright, guys. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Whitetail Bushcraft. This episode was the primitive hunting tool, the bolo. Thanks for joining us, all your comments and your views, and all your support. Catch you on the next video.